Hello physics students. Uh, today we are going to learn about density. We're going to learn about fluid pressure and hopefully if time allows we'll learn about uh, Pascal's principle. We'll learn about Archimedes principle. But we'll see where this video is going. For sure we're learning about density and pressures and fluids. Um, you guys know how to calculate density. I like to think of it as the if you go to the DMV, so density is mass divided by volume. Um, the SI units for density is kilograms times uh, meters cubed. I have seen um, other units as well for density. We've seen the grams per milliliter. For our physics class, we're gonna use kilograms per meters cubed. Um, so let's just talk a few things about density. Um, so with this uh, picture, you can see some common properties with density. Uh, the lighter, uh, let's see, the less dense an object is, it'll float. So for instance, helium gas is technically has, is less dense than air, so it floats. Um, this is kind of a really cool picture here. We have some um, different colored liquids all placed in the same cylinder. Um, you guys might be able to think, okay, which one is going to be more dense, which one's going to be less dense. Hopefully you answered that the less dense liquid would be here, um, the more dense liquid would be down here. Because the less dense something is, it will float. So maybe you guys want to put that in your notes. So this will be less dense. Over here, this would be more dense. And I know we've talked about density before in chemistry when I've had you guys and stuff like that. So this is pretty easy stuff for you. Um, so here are some common densities. Um, you'll have to refer to this table for working on the homework and stuff like that. Um, but if you notice, all these densities are given in the units of kilogram per meter cubed, which changes, th which changes things a little bit for us. Because um, you guys know that water we learned in chemistry is one gram per one milliliter. And if you look right here, you say, wait a second, water's not 1,000 grams per milliliter. Well, no, it's not. It's, it's 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed. So this is the unit we're gonna use for physics. Um, you can see here that seawater is more dense. So if you had fresh, a mixture of fresh water and, and uh, seawater, you would see that the fresh water would float. Um, you would see that olive oil floats on water. You would see that ethyl alcohol would float on the water. Um, here's oxygen, air, and helium. Helium's really light in, in terms of density, so that's why it floats pretty easily. The air around us is 1.29 kilograms per meters cubed. Here's another fun one, ice. Um, I think you guys know that ice is less dense than water. That's why it floats. That's why I get to go ice fishing in the winter time. Um, but yeah, so here's just some different densities. And it's calculated pretty easily. It's just density equals mass divided by volume. Pretty easy stuff. So if we're looking at this problem here, it says one day you look in your refrigerator and find nothing but a dozen eggs. A quick measurement shows that the inside of the refrigerator is one by 0 0.6 by 0 0.75. How does the mass of the air in the refrigerator compare with the mass of the eggs? So you guys know that air weighs something. Um, so this is kind of a fun problem. Let's just say you have a completely empty refrigerator. Um, how does that mass of the eggs compare to the air inside of the refrigerator? Well, here the problems worked out for us. We have 12 eggs. Each egg has a mass of 0.044. So you take 12 times that, okay? So the mass of the eggs is 0.53 kilograms. So that's how much we have in the refrigerator. If you compare that to the air's mass in the refrigerator, here's how it compares. Um, you're gonna use DMV for the formula. Um, the mass of, of the air is just here. You're gonna take the density of air, multiply it times the volume of the refrigerator. So the air's density is 1.29, and then you're gonna multiply these together, and we get 0.58. So this is kind of a fun calculation here. So if you just had a dozen eggs in a refrigerator that is this size, 
the air in the refrigerator actually has more mass than the dozen eggs. So that's just kind of a fun problem. Let's do one more. Um, like I said, densities are easy calculations. This is uh, by far one of the easier things we've done so far. So let's look at number 19. It says a certain gas occupies a volume of 0.28 uh, meters cubed and has a mass of 0.4 kilograms. What is the density of the gas? All right, so the formula, density equals mass divided by volume. In physics, they use the Greek symbol uh, rho. So it's kind of like a P with an extra hook to it. Um, so yeah, let's figure out that density of this gas. Well, the mass is found to be 0 0.40. The volume is found to be 0.28. So pretty simple to calculate it. We're just gonna take 0.4 divided by 0.28. And with sig figs, we're gonna say it's 1.4 and that will be kilograms per meters cubed. So what kind of a gas is this? Well, we'd have to look at our table and I, I wrote it over here as well. Um, I would say it's oxygen. I would say it's oxygen. So the second part to that problem would be what kind of gas is it? You'd have to refer to the table and I would say it's oxygen because oxygen is 1.43 for density. All right, I'm gonna leave number 20 for you guys. That's an easy problem. So now let's get into fluid pressure and what's kind of unique about it. Um, so if you look at this uh, figure right here, um, maybe you've considered this, maybe you haven't. Um, do you guys know where the greatest pressure would be in this container or even like this container? Like, is it gonna be here, 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 here? Um, it might be logical to say it's at the bottom. And you'd be right. Of course, the greatest pressure is gonna be at the bottom. If you've ever done a pencil dive in a lake, um, you notice that your ears will start to pop when you dive down into the lake. It's for the same reason. The farther you go down in the water column, the greater the pressure is gonna be. Um, that's not limited to just like a water fluid the air around us is considered a fluid so if you've ever taken a trip to Duluth Minnesota and you drive down the big hill you probably have noticed your ears pop as well well that's because the same reason the pressure is getting greater as you go down um, so yeah so the, there's gonna be late least pressures at the top the greatest pressure is gonna be at the bottom so that's a good key concept to understand so with that being said here's kind of a fun problem to look at this is actually called Pascal's vase. And if you fill either A, B, C, or D, the level ends up being at that same level. Um, and the reason why is because you got atmospheric pressure pushing down on all four tubes. It's the same atmospheric pressure. Um, so it levels out. So the question asks us, four containers are shown in 12.8, each filled with uh, water to the same level. Rank the containers in order of increasing pressure at the indicated depth H. Okay, so depth H is here, 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 and here. Um, you might be thinking, all right, well, this has more fluid in it, so it's gonna have more pressure. Uh, this one might have maybe less fluid, it's got like a curve in it, so maybe that one has even less pressure. Um, well, <laughs> but it's actually kind of a fun problem because technically they actually all have the same pressure at um, H. So A actually equals B, which equals C, which equals D. They all have the same pressure at that height. Um, I can say it like this too. Um, let's just say this is the ocean. Um, let's just say this is like a lake. And let's just say you, you dive down one meter in the ocean and you dive down one meter in the lake, the pressure is gonna be the same. Um, so it really doesn't matter how much you know liquid you have in there. It's just, it all depends on the depth of where you're at. Or if you dive into a pool, a swimming pool. If you dive down one meter in the pool, a pond, one meter in a lake, as long as it's the same fluid, I should say that, 
because the ocean salt water is going to be a little bit different. But as long as it, it's all fresh water and you dive down one meter, it's going to be the same. All right, so I'm going to let you guys read through these next two slides because it's basically kind of boring uh, driving of this formula right here, which um, how can we calculate the pressure anywhere in this bottle is basically what this formula is telling us. So we can figure out the pressure of the bottom. So if I want to know the bottom right here, what I do is I, I figure out the atmospheric pressure because there's going to be a force right here at the top and then I add the additional weight. So that's going to be rho, g, and then h. So this part of it, you can think of it as that's the extra right here. So you have to add this to here and that will give you um, the pressure at the bottom. And that'll be for like any sort of fluid. Um, let me skip ahead so it kind of makes more sense because this, this figure does do a really nice job explaining that. If you want to figure out the pressure at any depth in a fluid, what you do is, so let's, let's just say we have this container right here. You figure out the pressure at point one, that's right here. And then to figure out the extra pressure because you're moving down, you're going to add rho g h. So pressure increases with depth by this amount. So think of it as that's that amount. And that's what those two slides were deriving for you. So this would be like the additional pressure from the water. So if you want point two, well, you first need to know point one, because that's this pressure up to here. And then you're gonna add this amount, rho GH, and the H would be this additional height. So that's how the formula works. Pretty simple to work with. So we could probably apply that to this problem. Here's kind of a fun one. Um, I, I think you guys are all aware that the Titanic sank to the bottom of the ocean, um, but it was found in 1985 at a depth of 4,000 meters. So this is kind of a fun calculation because we can calculate how much pressure is on the Titanic at 4,000 meters. So if we use this formula, so P2 equals P1 plus rho, we're gonna go rho, g, h. Remember, rho is density, g is gravity, and then the height, okay? So if to figure out how much pressure, so that's P2, we wanna know how much pressure is at the, on the Titanic. Here's all we have to do. You have to figure out the first pressure. Well, that's going to be at the very top of the ocean, that's atmospheric pressure. So P1 is gonna be at the top, and I'm gonna tell you guys that this is going to be 101,000 pascals. So air pressure, we're feeling this right now, it's 101 pascals. Air pressure here is 101 pascals, and that's at sea level. Um, it changes depending on your altitude as well, but we are at sea level with this Titanic. So we could say uh, 101,000 pascals is the first P1. That's just simply air pressure at sea level plus we need to figure out the depth change in that height so what we do is you figure out the density um, but this is the ocean so this is salt water so our density is going to be uh, 1025 so 1025 because that's seawater times gravity 9.1 now the height is going to be well how far down is it so it's gonna be 4,000 meters below the sea. So now we can figure out the new pressure or the pressure on the Titanic. And I get an answer equal to 402. Eight one zero zero zero. So forty million two hundred eighty one pascals would be the pressure. Um, let's just call it four sig figs here. So we could say four zero and then two eight. We'll round it to that. So forty million uh, two hundred eighty 
uh, Pascal's of pressure is going to be put onto that Titanic, uh, which is quite a bit of pressure. I'm going to divide this by this amount to give you guys an idea here. That's 400 times the pressure um, that we're used to. So we have air pressure right here. That Titanic is experiencing 400 times um, the pressure that we are experiencing, uh, which makes it difficult to go down to the bottom of the ocean and study it because the pressure is so great. We send these submarines down there and other machines down there. We have to consider that at the bottom of the ocean, there's a lot of pressure and the things that we build, like those submarines to study it, we have to make sure it can withstand that amount of pressure. On your homework, there'll be some fun problems looking at the pressures of the bottom of some lakes around here. One of them is Serpent Lake. Uh, I put the depth on there. And when you guys do that problem in the homework, make sure you use fresh water for your density. So that'll be a fun one if you've ever considered how much pressure is at the bottom of like Serpent Lake. And there'll be some other lakes on there. So we can, we can actually apply this formula to uh, basically any point of where we're at. Basically, if we know this pressure here and we wanted to figure out a new pressure, we can just use this formula. As long as we know this, we can just add this to it. Um, we also need to know the type of fluid it is, obviously, whether it's fresh water, seawater, olive oil. So that's important too, because the density is changes. So here it is again. All right, so let's look at this kind of a different problem. It says a cubicle box of wood, 20 centimeters on a side is completely immersed in a fluid. At the top of the box, the pressure is 105 kilopascals. At the bottom of the box is 106.8 kilopascals. Uh, what is the density of the fluid? All right, so I'm gonna label that in here. We have 105. And it's, it says kilopascals, so I'll just convert it to a pascal. And then we're gonna have 106. Thousand. 800 is here okay um, obviously you guys could probably see that the height is 20 centimeters so we can convert that over to a meter so our units match up here um, so now we can actually solve this so we're going to use the formula p2 equals p1 plus rho g h we're trying to figure out the density of the fluid. But well, we have P2, we have P1, we have gravity, we have H. So we can just plug in our values. Um, let's see here, I guess for simplicity, I'll just keep the units as kilopascals because it'll work regardless. So let's just add those in there. So we're gonna go 106.8 equals 105. We're solving for rho. We know gravity is 9.8. We know the height of the liquid is 0.2. So then we're going to take and solve this for rho, or density. So it's 1.8. Rho times 9.8. Actually, I can just multiply that together. 9.8 times 0.2. 1.96 divide. So the algebra is the easy part. You guys know how to do this. So 1.8 divided by 1.96. And rho equals 0.9. Um, with sig figs, however, let's go with 4. 0 0.1 or 0.918. And we'll round that to 4. And that's going to be the kilograms per meters cubed. So there you go. So about 0.9184 is gonna be the density of that fluid. For fun, let's go back and find, so 0.9 is the density of the fluid, which we do not have. Well, I mean, technically we do. Well, we don't really have that one. 
All right. So there's that one. Let's see here. Oop, I'm sorry. Yeah, we. Let's go back and revisit that problem. What actually we solved it for was grams. Um, we actually have to move it over three decimal places, so it should be 918.4. And that would be the kilograms per meters cubed. And uh, the reason for that is we did have to have those in Pascals. So I actually should redo that one. So one, two, one, two. So if you solve that for um, using the Pascal, you will get the, the correct unit, which what we want is the kilograms per meters cubed, which does help us on the next problem where it says given that the density of the fluid is 920 grams per meters cubed what is the depth d to the top of the box oh so that's kind of a fun problem so now we want to figure out and i have the picture there we want to figure out right here the actual depth of the box um so we need to know, okay, this will be the new P1 because that's atmospheric pressure. And to the top of that box will be the new P2. Um, and the P2 is going to be our, let's see here, this will be our 101 Pascals because that's atmospheric pressure. The P2 is going to be the 105,000. So I'll just kind of stop so that way you guys can think about it. So this will be the new P2, which is 105,000. This will be the, um, the P1 that's from the atmosphere, so that's 101 pascals. We're trying to figure out H. So if you're looking at the formula, we're going to have uh, P2 equals P1 plus rho times G times H. Uh, we now know the density from the previous problem, and we know gravity, and we know the P2 and the P1, so we just have to plug in those values. So the P2 is going to be 105,000 equals the P1, which is 101,000, plus the density, which we've solved in the previous problem, was 920, times gravity is 9.8, times the height. So now we just solve that for the height, because that'll be the new height. So this will be uh, 4,000 equals, let's see here, 920, times 9.8 equals 9,016 times height. Divide that over. Okay, so height equals, I suppose we'll use two sig figs, uh, 0 0.44, um, but the units would be a meter. So 0 0.44 meter, we could say that would be 44 centimeters. So let's kind of think about that. Does that seem logical? And I would say, yes, it does seem logical because the height of this box is 20 and it changed by about 1,000 kilopascals. Uh, that height starts at 44 centimeters. So that's kind of a fun problem. Let's see here. I think what I'll do is I'll leave the Hoover Dam problem for you guys because that's just applying the same formula. And I'll leave this one for you guys. So let's look at a concept example. How do, or do the bubbles change in size? So when we're looking at this picture, if you have someone or a scuba diver or even a fish, 
and they, they let out some bubbles at the bottom of a lake, do they change their size on their journey up to the top of the lake? Um, hopefully, your guys' answer would be, yes, they do change their size, because at the bottom of the lake, you're gonna have greater pressure, so then the, the bubbles will be a lot smaller. And then at the bottom, or at the top of the lake, the bubbles will grow. So next time you guys are, are swimming in a lake, you can try this for fun. You can dive down as far as you can. Maybe let a little bit of air out. Have somebody at the surface of the lake and you'll see that the bubbles come up a lot bigger. All right, um, so let's talk about barometers and how they can measure pressure. So this is kind of a very basic barometer, very, very simple. Um, so you guys know that there's atmospheric pressure all around us. Um, when air is pushing down on this container, it pushes up higher on this fluid. We can measure the height. It's basically how barometers work. It's literally that simple. Um, they have set, when they made barometers, they set it equal to 760 millimeters of mercury um, for one atmospheric pressure. So if you're looking at this barometer right here, this would be filled with mercury. They figured out that one atmospheric pressure when they were making their barometers rose up to 760 millimeters of mercury. So when you guys see some problems in your homework, um, this is just something for you guys to consider is that one atmosphere equals 760 millimeters of mercury. So if you're given problems where they're giving you atmosphere for a pressure, or excuse me, millimeters of mercury for a pressure, just convert it over to how many atmospheres you have. So here's actually a nice summary of all the different uh, units of pressure. So with one atmospheric pressure, that equals 760 millimeters of mercury. It equals that 101, the kilopascals. This is that value we use in those problems. And it's kilopascals, that's why I converted it to 101,000. That was my mistake on that other problem. I needed to convert it to 101,000. So I just needed to add the three zeros there. Um, and about one bar is another unit of pressure. That'd be 1,000 kilopascals. Uh, kind of what we're used to, uh, I suppose here in, in America is pound per square inch, or PSI. Um, so one atmosphere equals 14.7 pounds per square inch is what we're feeling and I think what we'll do is I'll stop the video there and I'll make a part two because we're going to talk about Pascal's principle and Archimedes principle so I'll stop the video there uh, we'll pick up with part two later on